This video is brought to you by Captivating History. In our previous video, Greek Mythology Creation Story Explained in Animation, you learned about the 10-year war between the Titans and the Olympian gods. In this video, you will discover fascinating facts about the new gods who ascended to power after the defeat of the Titans. Knowing about these gods will help you to follow along better with all the captivating stories we have in book format, but also those that will be coming out in video format. Those shown in this video are our top 19 gods and goddesses. However, they are not ranked in any particular order in regard to who we think is more important than another. However, we'd love to see a list from you. Who are your favorite Greek gods or goddesses, and how would you rank them? Drop your comments below. Number 1. Zeus, Jupiter or Jove to the Romans, following his defeat of Cronus, was lord of the heavens and king over the deities of Olympus. He wielded the thunderbolt, which no enemy could withstand. He was husband to Hera, brother to Hera, Hades, and Poseidon, and father to Apollo, Ares, Artemis, Athena, Hermes, and many more. His children were born to many mothers, which was a grief to Hera. Sometimes he is described as the upholder of justice and protector of poor people, guests, and suppliants. Sometimes he is described as rather arbitrary and tyrannical, as in his punishment of Prometheus, not to mention philandering. Number 2. Poseidon, Neptune to the Romans, was the god of the sea, creator of calms and storms, thus both feared and revered by sailors and all who had occasion for voyages. He also created horses, a great gift to humans. He wielded a powerful trident. His brothers were Zeus and Hades, and his wife was Amphitrite. His son was Proteus, a very wise deity who liked to keep his wisdom to himself. Humans who wanted to learn from Proteus first had to find him and then hold on to him as he became a variety of wild beasts in turn. If they could hold on to him long enough, he would take his own shape and tell them what they wanted to know. Number 3. Aphrodite, Venus to the Romans, was the goddess of love and desire. Like her son Eros, she might be blessed or cursed by mortals, depending what their own experience of love had been. She gave laughter and beauty and delight to mortals, and also shame, confusion, and torment. In the Iliad, she is Zeus's daughter, but most tales say she had no parents and that she was born when Uranus got wounded. She was married to Hephaestus, but seems to have preferred Ares. Number 4. Hades, Pluto to the Romans, was the god of the netherworld, which was named after him. Although Hades is occasionally used as a polite euphemism for the Christian hell, Hades' realm was not necessarily a place of punishment, although it was dark and the journey there was perilous and terrifying to those living mortals who dared venture there, drawn by love or need. He was, obviously, the god of the dead. As the god of the depths of the earth from which precious metals came, he was also the god of wealth, hence our word plutocrat. His unwilling wife was Persephone. Number 5. Apollo, who was also Apollo to the Romans, sometimes also called Loxias or Phoebus, was the god of the sun, music, prophecy, and medicine. It was said that he could utter no falsehood, and his oracle at Delphi gave truthful answers to mortals who sought it out, though indeed the truth was often so riddlingly and obscurely worded that mortals who tried to act in response to its pronouncements sometimes felt that they had been deceived. He taught men the healing arts, and he delighted all living beings with his music. But he cruelly punished a mortal who dared to rival his musical skills. He was moreover a god of archery, one who never missed his shot, so it was highly inadvisable to anger him in any way. His father was Zeus, his mother the Titaness Leto, his twin sister was Artemis. Number 6. Athena, Minerva to the Romans, sometimes also called Pallas, was the virgin goddess of wisdom, strategy, and defensive war for the most part, although in the Trojan War she aided the attackers, for reasons of her own which are described in our upcoming book. She was the patroness of the city of Athens and the creator of olive trees, an important gift as olive oil was an essential part of the Greek diet. She also taught mortals many of the arts of civilization. Poseidon made horses, but Athena made the bridle and taught humans horse taming. 
Weaving and agriculture are also said to be her gifts to men. Still, like Apollo, she could be jealous and vindictive. When a mortal woman, Arachne, dared to say that her weaving rivaled Athena's own, Athena challenged her to a contest. And when their work was seen to be equally good, Athena destroyed the weaving and beat the woman, who hanged herself. Athena does seem to have felt somewhat sorry afterward. She brought Arachne back to life as a spider so that she would weave forever. From her, we get our word Arachne. Athena was the daughter of Zeus, having sprung from his head, full grown and fully armed. Number 7. Hermes, Mercury to the Romans, was one of the youngest gods, but not the least significant. He was the patron of commerce and also of theft. As a child less than one day old, he stole Apollo's cattle, and when Apollo came to reclaim them, Hermes got him to trade them back in return for the lyre, which Hermes had just invented. He was often the messenger of the gods, and many of his statues show him with winged feet. His father was Zeus, and his mother, the Titaness Maia. Number 8. Pan, Faunus to the Romans, was the son of Hermes and the god of shepherds and goat herds. Pan's shape was something between a goat's and a man's. The music he made on his pan pipes was enchantingly sweet, but he also made the indefinably alarming noises which frightened travelers at night. Our word panic comes from Pan's name. Number 9. Ares, Mars to the Romans, was the god of war. Not necessarily just war or defensive war, but any war going. We get Marshall from his name. Some human authors revered Ares for the courage he taught and the glory which could be won in his service. Others reviled him as cruel, arbitrary, and pitiless, and, in some versions, a coward as well. He was more popular with the Romans than the Greeks, which says something about what each society valued. His parents were Zeus and Hera, and his twin sister and frequent companion was Eris, the goddess of strife. He does not seem to have had a wife, but for a time, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, was his lover. Number 10. Eros, Cupid to the Romans, was the god of love and the companion, in later tales, the son of Aphrodite. His paternity is uncertain given his mother's habits. His character is similarly disputed. All agree that he brought love into humans' hearts. Some said he was a grave and gentle spirit who moved mortals to generosity, courage, and goodness and gave beauty and light to the world. Others that he was a wayward boy who shot his passion and flaming arrows spitefully or randomly or when blindfolded and drove mortals to lust and ruin. His wife was Psyche. The story of their courtship is told in our upcoming book. Number 11. Hephaestus, Vulcan or Musselbert to the Romans was the smith of the gods, who made their ornaments, their weapons, and many other things both beautiful and terrible. Alone among the gods, he had the misfortune of being crippled, though this did not hinder him in his work. Hera was his mother. His paternity is in some doubt. Some stories say he was married to Aglia, one of the graces, but more say that he was married to Aphrodite, who betrayed him with Ares. Number 12. Dionysus, Bacchus to the Romans was the god of wine, madness, and ecstasy. His father was Zeus, and his mother was the mortal woman Semele. Semele died before bearing him, largely due to Hera's jealousy. But Zeus saw to it that the premature child lived, and later Dionysius took the terrible journey to the underworld to bring his mother back and lead her to everlasting life with the bright gods in Olympus. On earth, the poets say he was worshipped, not with orderly rituals and sacrifices in temples, but by troops of ecstatic women who lived out of doors and roamed from place to place, drinking, dancing, and singing, their eyes bright with wine. The Menads, Bacchanals to the Romans, had a freedom and a joy about them, but they could also turn to murderous madness. Number 13. Prometheus the Titan was the first benefactor of humans. He was the god of forethought and perhaps he was able to see who would have the victory in the ten-year war between the Titans and the Olympian gods. But later on, he showed compassion for the weak and oppressed, even when it cost him everything, and it may be that he joined the young gods in compassion, and they would not have had the victory without him and his brother. Be that as it may, Zeus and his allies were victorious in the war, 
and they cast Cronus and the rest of the Titans into Tartarus, a black pit in the depths of the earth. One Titan, Atlas, was made to support the weight of the heavens on his shoulders. Only Prometheus and Epimetheus remained free. Number 14. Hera, Juno to the Romans, was Zeus's wife and sister, and the mother of Hephaestus, Ares, Hebe, and others. Many of the stories about her have to do with her jealousy of Zeus and her attempts to punish either him or his lovers. Though in the Trojan War and the quest of the Golden Fleece, she took an active role for other reasons. She could be very kind to mothers whose children were begotten by Zeus. She and her daughter, Ilithia, helped women in childbirth. Number 15. Artemis, Diana to the Romans, was the virgin goddess of the hunt, of wild animals, and of the moon. She was beautiful, strong, skilled, and solitary. She was said to be the protector of wild creatures and of human young as well, especially virgins, though this contrasts oddly with her role in the story of Iphigenia. Her twin brother was Apollo, her mother Leto, and her father Zeus. Some stories also identify her with Selene, goddess of the moon, and Hecate, goddess of the underworld. Number 16. Demeter, Ceres to the Romans, was the goddess of the earth, of fruitfulness, and of growing plants. Athena might have taught men how to cultivate grain, but Demeter gave it life. She was loved and honored for this, and the poets also remembered the dreadful time when Demeter grieved and withdrew her power from the earth. For Demeter had a daughter, which is our number 17, Persephone, Proserpina to the Romans, a very beautiful girl. Hades, lord of the underworld, saw her beauty and wanted it for himself, and he seized her and took her by force into the dark world below. Demeter searched for her daughter a long time, and when she learned who had taken her, she left Olympus and shut herself up in her grief. For a time, she wandered among mortals in the shape of a poor old woman and rewarded richly those who took her in and greeted her with kindness. Then she took on her divine form again but she kept herself apart from gods and men as she wept for her daughter. While Demeter grieved, no green thing grew in the wild, and no seed sown by the farmers sprouted. The earth was locked in winter for a whole year round, and people grew famished. Zeus saw that all things would die if this continued, and he sent Hermes to Hades to carry Zeus's command that Persephone must be released. He sent her back unwillingly, but first, he tricked her into eating pomegranate seeds, which brought her lastingly to the world of the dead for four months of every year. So for eight months, mother and daughter are together, and plants grow and flourish. The sun shines warm, and the winds blow gently. But for four months, Persephone descends to the dead again, and Demeter mourns. The winds are sharp and cold, frost gnaws the land, and nothing grows. Number 18. Eris is the goddess of discord, the sister of Ares, daughter of Hera and Zeus, and generally to be found at his side when mayhem and slaughter are afoot. She is credited with setting in motion the events which led to the Trojan War. Unlike her brother Ares, she seems to have been unpopular even with the Romans. Number 19. Hestia, Vesta, was the virgin goddess of the hearth and home, much loved and venerated by many mortals though not much celebrated in their more dramatic stories. Her father was Zeus. There you have it, the top 19 gods and goddesses who ruled Olympus. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. If you want to get a closer look at some facets of their character, you don't want to miss out on our new book that will be coming out very soon. It's called Greek Mythology, a captivating introduction to Greek myths of Greek gods, goddesses, heroes, and monsters. And in it, you can explore captivating stories such as the Battle for Troy, Oedipus and his children, the Midas Touch, and many more. If you're watching this video a couple of weeks after it's been published, the link can be found in the description. Otherwise, you'll just have to be patient. We'll of course aim to provide you with more videos as well, so make sure to hit the subscribe button. To get your first Mythology Bundle ebook for free, just visit the link below and join our exclusive captivating history and mythology list.